and I suspect that what we're going to get is not getting to not getting beyond neutral and ending up with an inflation problem that persists next year. That's my big worry right now, Richard. Top economist Mohammed El Irian says stagflation is unavoidable and investors should prepare for a significant slowdown in growth. The U.S. is staring down the barrel of 1970s style stagflation as economic growth slows and inflation remains elevated. According to Mohammed El Irian, the chair of Gramercy Fund Management and chief economic advisor at Lance, the U.S. economy won't be able to avoid a bout of stagflation and markets have yet to tune into the risk of a significant slowdown in growth. While the U.S. can perhaps avoid a recession, what is unavoidable is stagflation, El Irian told Bloomberg Television's Francine Lacqua. We've seen growth coming down and we're seeing inflation remaining high. He blamed the situation in part on the Federal Reserve's view from 2021 that inflation would at some point fade. It's since retired the transitory thesis and is now tightening monetary policy with Chair Jerome Powell saying recently that interest rates will be raised until there's clear and convincing evidence that inflation is in retreat. While some economic indicators suggest that the recovery remains on track, others show that consumers may be stalling out and that households and businesses are becoming increasingly pessimistic. The U.S. Federal Reserve will have to respond more nimbly to economic softening than it did to strengthening in 2021. El Irian has been a well-known critic of the Federal Reserve since his days as a top executive at PIMCO, where he and bond king Bill Gross were such expert Fed interpreters that came to manage around $2 trillion of assets under management. Before we listen to El Irian, we want to use this opportunity to thank all our viewers and subscribers for watching our videos. Thank you very much. Please give this video a like and consider subscribing if you are yet to do so. So two different questions. Do I think we can skirt a recession? I think we can because the labor market is so strong. Um, do I think the Fed can soft land the economy, meaning it can bring down inflation in a very orderly um, way? No, I don't. I think that the Fed is going to struggle. Where we get into a recession is in one of two situations. If the Fed not just struggles, but ends up making a major policy mistake, and has already has made a few of them, or alternatively, if we get a massive market accident. So keep your eye on both these things. But in general, the recession is a risk scenario, not the baseline. What does one do? What does the investor do at the moment? So it's very tricky for the investor because we are coming from a situation where markets are incredibly distorted. You know, when the Fed balloons its balance sheet to nine trillion, in the process of doing so, it distorts markets. Now, it, in the good old days, both the bond prices and stock prices were going up at the same time, so no one really cared. But now that they both go down at the same time as the Fed withdraws liquidity, you cannot hide. And the most unsettling element of today's market is that there is nowhere to hide. And that is making people really nervous. Because, not unreasonably, those people who are told, look, invest in bonds as you get older, because, you know, that's for your safety and security. The 45, 65, becoming 50, 50, reversing in the, in, in the ratios. doesn't make any difference. It doesn't. I mean, remember, bonds, government bonds are known to be risk free. Right. They are supposed to do well when the stock market does badly. But when you start from a situation where the Fed has bought so many bonds that it, it artificially pushed the price so high up, there's only one way to go down. And that's what investors have experienced. And it's a pretty horrible feeling because there's no safe havens. So let me distinguish between what they should do and what right. they're likely to do. <laughs> Good idea. What they should do is, yes, they should go beyond neutral and they should make sure that this inflation problem doesn't become embedded in the economy and last well into 2023 and undermine growth and undermine um, and, and worsen inequality. That's what they should do. But I suspect what the Fed will do is a stop go. It will hit the brakes and then it will get nervous. It will ease off the brakes too early. And I suspect that what we're going to get is not getting to not getting beyond neutral and ending up with an inflation problem that persists next year. That's my big worry right now, Richard. When we talked right at the beginning of this early last year, you said that the inflation wasn't transitory. You're one of the first people who came out and said that. If you could see that, why couldn't the Fed? Simple reason. The Fed wasn't looking in the right place. If you listen to companies earnings call one after the other, starting in May, 
were saying, we don't think this is transitory. We don't think our supply chains get fixed that quickly. We don't think transportation gets fixed. We don't think the labor market, we're having difficulty. If you had just listened to what company after company was saying, they were, say, they were basically telling us, don't get stuck on this transitory inflation narrative because it may right. not be the case. You said I can learn a lot about Jenga and about strategy and about the way investors think about things. What can I learn? So there are two types of players. There is the one who just wants to make it through their round, so they do the safe thing. And there's the one who looks forward to two or three rounds and tries to undermine the other player and takes a lot more risk. Um, I think right now, if you're an investor, do the first one. Just get through these markets because they're still tricky. Um, don't try to take too much risk. Not yet. What do you make of El Erian interview? Do you believe that there is nowhere to hide from this inflationary environment or do you believe there is a safe asset that can possibly protect against inflation, which we believe is going to get worse? Even though Bitcoin has been correlated with the traditional assets and have crashed as a result, we still believe it's still the best hedge against inflation. Protect yourself and your family by continuously buying Bitcoin using dollar cost averaging. You can thank me in 10 years time. Thanks for watching. Stay savvy.